So what's the, what are these eight days all about? Um, well, first of all, it's a fantastic informal learning opportunity. But this is not education in our normal, in, in the formal sense in, 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 in sport. It's an opportunity for coaches to design programs for coaches, and this is what this is about. As far as learning opportunities are concerned, you may have noticed on the board as you came in a red, an orange or amber, and a green piece of paper. What, I'm, what I'd like to happen after every uh, morning or afternoon session is for us to take time on, on, on reflective learning. Uh, and so, very simply, uh, what are you going to stop because of what you've learned? What are you going to stop doing? What are you going to start doing? And what are you going to continue doing but doing even better? And maybe scribble it on a post-it and stick it outside here on the appropriate uh, piece of paper. And we'll collect all of these things because they're all going to be downloaded on the big grand website. And on that subject, and who am I to talk about technology? Everybody knows how bad I am at that in terms of social media. What we've done for Twitter is there'll be a hashtag stop G G G G GCH stop, GCH start, GCH continue. And you can, long after this, <coughs> as you go through your learning experiences as, as coaches, you can just pump in a quick tweet and the things that you've learned can be passed on around the global coaching community. And that subject, of course, that's the second function of all of this, is the idea of a community to grow it. This is an idea to connect with coaches around the world or across sports so that we can learn from each other even faster than we can on our own. And finally, of course, the function of this is that everything that we do in these global coaches houses, we collect, we gather, they're all recorded, and we download this on a website, website which is for you to use. Because now you're officially members of the Global Coaching House community. So that's the start of everything. So let me very quickly give you a trip through what I think we're here to do. Everybody who knows me knows that sooner or later you are going to get this slide this week on this board. Probably the only sustainable competitive advantage we have is the ability to learn faster than the opposition. Of course, there's nobody in this room that would argue with that. Of course not. You've got very intelligent people. Uh, so here's your no-brain question. Do you think you can learn faster on your own in life, only having access to your own experiences, or by having ex access to the experiences of everybody else in this room? Come on. You turbocharge the whole thing. So we're in this learning business together. <coughs> but you've got to be prepared to learn then. Pre prepared to learn means two things to me. First of all, it's an attitude thing. Do you have an attitude that you'll never stop learning in life? And you look out, you seek out the moments, every moment of your life. But secondly, have you got a process in place to learn from life? So when we go to Olympic Games or games like this, for example, we know there are things that we're going to have to, we, we need to learn, but have we put the machinery in place to, to gather every possible piece of intelligence that's out there so that we can translate this into something that we can use for our own coaching lives? We'll talk in, the, in this, week, this week about the athlete's high performance journey, but we shouldn't forget, of course, that in this high performance journey, once we get through the beginner stages, and if th th those of you who'd like me to do so, I'll, I'll, I'll go through with you, the cost to health and to the economy of not providing activity for children. It is vast, it's devastating worldwide, and it's a disgrace if we, in our generation, don't address this. So whatever happens when we introduce to the beginners, whether they're children or whatever, when we introduce them to the world, our world of sport and activity, of course some we want to go the full journey. But some, of course, we want to get into regular activity for life, to have an active life plan. It's their mountain, their ALP, A-L-P, an active life plan. 
We've been very clever at putting this stuff together for high performance, but do we just assume that having that if they're not going to, if they're not going to join us in the, in the high performance journey, that they will just routinely find their way through life, doing active things? We know for sure that what will motivate a young person to do activity now may not retain them in the future. When they, but if you've got them going in primary school, will they still have the the same motivations in, in secondary school but because the climate, the motivational climate will change around about them. Then what if they go to university? And then when they leave university and go into life beyond that? I believe we've got to make sure that there's a plan for that. We've also, we've, we've, but what's our business here? Our business is about a, a world that is athlete-centered, is coach-led, and it's performance science supported. And we'll go through that in detail later. There's a journey for you learning. I mentioned to begin with that this is <coughs> informal learning here. This is what I think our learning pathway is as a coach. You start off front loading. See, see the, my da the purpose of a diagram? This is, it's more important formal education at this stage than at that stage. Informal is more important as we go through. You, you are, there are some things in life you can be taught. There are other things in life you can only learn. You can be taught the science, the tools of the trade. You need this before you even get into the game. But you can only learn the art. And we learn it through experience. But are we clever at shaping that experience? Is my generation, have we been clever enough to try to shape the learning experience for you? Have we got the right quality of mentor who, having exposed you to the experience, can help you learn the lesson. You know that you know Vernon's very smart quote, quote on this. Experience is the toughest of all teachers because she gives you the test before she gives you the lesson. But we know we need to use the reality of experience when it comes to this learning bit. Once we get up to that top end there, we've got to learn to take high performance science as support and turn that into quality decisions under pressure. What do we do as coaches? We prepare people technically and behaviorally for performance. You cannot deliver results. Yes, you can, Frank. No, you can't. You can only deliver performance. It's by making sure the performance is right that you get the results. And if we, even if we don't get the results, surely we're developing people through the process. Three behaviors that we have to make sure people grasp as we go on the, as they go through this journey. Very simple acronym for us: ODD, Own, Decide, Do. Prepare our people to take personal ownership of every moment to turn into opportunity to make a winning difference. Take considered risks in decision making. Second time I mentioned that. That's really the art of what we do in life: to make the right choices, to make the right judgment calls, and the right decisions. There are people far better equipped in this room to talk to you about that than I. And finally, just do it effectively and excellently every time and go for the win. For most of us, of course, this means stepping beyond an edge. We're doing this all the time. We will always come to situations that we've never experienced before. I'm asking you to take the risk to step forward. Of course, when you do step forward, there's fear because we've not been there before. The great thing about fear is that it's through fear that we learn courage. A lot of people say that that's not true, Frank, surely. Courage is the absence of fear. How courage can't exist if there's no fear. <laughs> so we've got to get ourselves into that mindset. The journey then takes us from the culture, the influence that we, that, that we exist in, our, 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 our national culture, our sporting culture, our coaching culture. We link every moment in our life take to being odd, owning, deciding, and doing. Whatever our role, we take it, we build one link upon another until ultimately the consequence is the performance that we intend to deliver on the day. The most difficult part of that, of course, is, is simplifying the whole thing. And to me, this is as simple as it can make it. The only thing you can do is to control the controllables. My, my young daughter, my younger daughter got married this year, 
and there was this nervousness around the breakfast table before we went into the day of the wedding. And you can imagine what sort of a father I might be in these situations. And I would say, say to, to mum, grandmum, and everybody, you can only control the controllables. Make sure you've done that. You know there's going to be glitches. If you've done the controllables, you'll be able to manage the glitches as they come. We've got to be able to get to, to, to grasp the marginal gains. What are marginal gains? Just so we understand each other here, there's a Scottish swimmer who was, was working with the, one of the cycling coaches. And the cycling coach said, you know, in cycling, uh, we, we put vinegar on the spokes of the wheel. And the, the swimmer said, what good does that do? He said, almost nothing. So the conversation went on. But a few weeks later, the swimmer came back and said, I really don't get that. You're a sensible person. Why would you be putting vinegar on wheels when it does nothing for you? He said, I didn't say that. I said it was almost nothing. When you add together all the almost nothings that influence performance out there, you get something. These are the marginal gains. We learn to eliminate er errors. We, 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 through this process, have an agility of a mindset to deal with change. And because of that, Whenever we go into the arena where we know there's no certainties out there, there's only uncertainties, we leverage the uncertainty to our advantage. A final message to you as you go through this week, <coughs> if you think about your own coaching and your own role and your own part in all of this, and you may sometimes think, well, what difference can I make? Remember this, you are each unique in all of time. So in your time, you alone can make your difference to this world. That's what this week is all about. Other people will say it far more eloquently than me and in far more detail. But having said that, I wish you a fantastic week. I hope you, you hit all of these objectives about your connectedness for a network, the building of the Global Coaches House community and being part of that, contributing to our resource, and above all other things, learning faster than everyone else. May I ask the high performance group to remain here, and the rest of you, gout. <laughs> <laughs>